so am I. Hotel after Dynasty. It is now 46 minutes after. Timothy Dalton is not a new-faced moviegoers or television viewers, from Flash Gordon to Mistral's Daughter uh, to The Lion in Winter with Peter O'Toole. Timothy Dalton's pretty well-known already, but now he is James Bond, and Joel Siegel went on location in Tangiers to meet him. I admire your luck, Mr... Bond. James Bond. Wait a minute. Mr. If he's James Bond... My name's Bond. And if James he's Bond. James Bond... My real name is Bond. James Bond, you must take my word for it. And if he's James Bond, who's this guy? <laughs> Could he be James Bond? And action, Tim. Timothy Dalton, the new James Bond, filming The Living Daylights on location in Tangiers. Did you ever imagine, ever think you would play James Bond? Well, no, because Sean Connery was doing it. <laughs> And he was, he was Bond. He was going to be Bond forever. Not exactly. Only diamonds are forever. Sean Connery was James Bond, starting Yes with Dr. No 25 years ago. Good evening, sir. After the last few Bonds, Roger Moore would say, 007, no, no more. More than a billion people have seen the 16 films, the most successful character in the most successful series in screen history. Talk about Goldfinger. He is the spy who we love. He's a man that fulfills a lot of fantasies, I think probably both male and female. I suppose a lot of women in the audience feel that maybe if it was them, just them, I could do it, you know. Whether you call them strengths or weaknesses, I mean, hard drinking, hard smoking, hard driving, uh, womanizing. If you're working as a secret agent, you can't become emotionally involved. But having set that up, that hard, side to the man's character. He then always, he then always had a, a moment of vulnerability when he fell for a woman. How are you going to make your bond different? Well, there's no way that it cannot be my own. I mean, just being a different man with a different look obviously makes a, a tremendous change anyway. All right, we'll go over there. All right, now you press the red button to start. The first thing that strikes you about Timothy Dalton are his looks. He looks A, great, and B, like he means business. Intense on the set, private off the set. He worries over details, his clothes, the props, the action. If I jab the guard with a left, that's not enough to knock him out. I've got to land a haymaking right that other actors would leave to the director or just ignore. It looks like that blow's coming from with some more weight behind it. That's part of Dalton's classical, yes, Royal Shakespeare Company training. I think perhaps an English actor probably works across the medium more. Theater, television, film. I mean, in my first year, uh, not only was I working at the Birmingham Repertory Theater, a very famous English repertory theater where Finney and Olivier trained, but also did a movie called The Lion in Winter with O'Toole and Catherine Hepburn, um, and a TV, a short TV series. And look at him now. Not even the Royal Shakespeare Company can train you for this, or this. <laughs> you do I mean, your... James Bond doesn't play Shakespeare. <laughs> How much of you is in James Bond? Oh, I mean, very little. I mean, I don't have any licenses to kill. <laughs> no, nobody's shooting guns at me. No. But I think, I think probably the... I think one of the reasons for the success of any character, be it a character in classical drama or modern TV or in movies, is that audiences feel that they can identify with elements of that person that they can understand. Do you have any idea what your life is going to be like once this film comes out? Probably a lot easier than um, people who are in very popular TV shows that run in everybody's homes every day or every week, you know. I think I have four days off in a five-month shoot. Why are you smiling when you say that? Because well, it's uh, exciting to be... I mean, I think the thing I get most pleasure from in my life is the work I do. So why not be happy about it? I mean, it makes me happy. <laughs> Should make him happy. <laughs> right now it's 10 minutes before 8. We are going to see more of Joel's visit with Timothy Dalton tomorrow, but right now uh, we're going to break for commercial. We'll come back and we'll look at what yesterday's election really means right after this from Visa.
one before nine right now. James Bond movies have always taken us to the exotic, romantic kind of places. The new one is no exception. In fact, Joel Siegel wound up in Tangier, Morocco, uh, to take us on location with a new James Bond, who's Timothy Dalton. Tangiers. The name alone spins webs of intrigue, the promise of romance, a hint of danger. This is something I have always wanted to say. Come with me to the Kasbah. The truth, with due respect to Charles Boyer, the Kasbah is hardly romantic and certainly not dangerous. But there is an excitement here. They don't do it this way at the local Piggly Wiggly, but they've been doing it this way here for 2,000 years. Mark Twain called Tangiers clear out of this world. But this is more than the Kasbah, more than Tangiers. This is the set of the new James Bond movie, The Living Daylights. Doing this kind of James Bond stunt is tough anywhere. I get really good buzz out of it. Right, we've got people out there on the balcony looking. Add the crowds, the color, and a camel or two, and tough becomes almost impossible. I think the most difficult thing about doing this type of scene is basically setting it up and making it look natural. Trying to make the locals act for you. Action! I trek to Tangiers and schlep to the Kasbah when they've got palm trees and stucco and costumes and camels in Hollywood. There's a certain glamour that the, uh, the, the kids that watch television and watch films today, they're very smart and they know just where you are. They know you're in Hollywood behind a palm tree and not in Wazazat or not in Morocco. Most producers would give an arm for their names to become household words, but Bond's producer started that way. His name is Cubby Broccoli. He was a truck farmer on New York's Long Island and uncle brought the vegetable over from Italy. The first broccoli was raised right on the other side of 59th Street Bridge in Long Island City. You're kidding. I, I'm, it's kind of good vegetable. I think so. This broccoli left farming for another kind of green. In 25 years, he's produced 15 Bond films, sold a few billion tickets. He knows it's worth the trip, even though shooting on this scale is a monster. 200 people eating, sleeping, working, tons of equipment, bottom line costs, $250,000 a day. Lost if the camera breaks down, if the star gets hurt, if it rains, if the $3 million yacht doesn't show up. It sailed in this morning with at least 15 minutes to spare. Last night, this 59 Chevy convertible was literally a chicken coop. In this scene, Bond, the new James Bond, played by British actor Timothy Dalton, is being kidnapped by two typically beautiful James Bond women. <laughs> we're just um, arresting him and he thinks we're hookers, which we're not, we're CIA agents. <laughs> 298, take five, and run ahead. And action! On screen, their camera won't show you the whole picture. You'd think the chickens would have remembered to change the oil every 2,000 miles. Well, it's not ramble, you know. This day, the Bond girls were posing at the pool. Oh, we're just like the girls that lounge around and make everything look luxurious, really. <laughs> the second unit was filming stunts in the Kasbah. The female lead, Marianne Daba, was posing for stills. The villains of the piece were plotting on how they were going to rule the world. Our hero held helpless aboard a $3 million yacht. Now that's a day's work. Well, this location is romantic and it's exciting. I guess we're like a lot of gypsies, wandering gypsies, really. Uh, our boys are very traveled and very experienced and tend to sort of make themselves comfortable wherever they go. Well, they're a big, happy family. They've been making these Bond movies for 25 years. They all know each other and love each other, and they just uh, walking along like a happy army, giggling, making a good old movie and having a good time. They're just down home. Without the teamwork and the timing of a crew that's been together for some members 10, even 15 years, this would be Mission Impossible. But of course it's not. It's James Bond. Joel, thank you.